Okay, so section 5.4, uh, Foundations of Math 30, mutually exclusive events. This is what the lesson is about today. Now, you may have an idea on what mutually exclusive uh, events are. Anyone want to render a guess here? Yep. Events that can't happen at the same time. Okay, so mutually means between the two, right? Exclusive means apart from, right? To be exclusive. Or um, if you're in an exclusive relationship, I suppose that you are, you are apart from anyone else other than the one you're in a relationship with, right? So this, isn't a, this, isn't a, this is sort of a relationship, but it's mutually exclusive. So they're apart from each other. See that? They're, a, they're mutually exclusive. So I, you know, you're exclusive from the other person, the other person is exclusive from you. So they're mutually apart. So that's very good, yes. Two events that can't happen at the same time. Okay, let's do an investigation here, just to see you know, how this would kind of play out. So the investigate here on page 328 looks like this. Yannick and Violetta are playing a board game. To move on this turn, Yannick must roll either doubles or a sum of seven with the two standard dice. Okay, so what's the probability that Yannick will move on this turn? So he needs doubles or a sum of seven. Okay, so if doubles come up, he moves. If a seven comes up, he moves. So let's take a look at the sample space, okay, the outcome table, and I've already done that. You don't have to write this down. You should have seen this already. So here we are, um, mutually exclusive events. So here are two dice, one to six for dice A, one to six for dice B, or die A and die B. Uh, the, sum are, the sums are measured uh, and written down here, okay? So one plus one is two, six plus six is 12. So where are the doubles? Which square represents doubles? Well, if we have, let's see, one and one, here's a double. Two and two, there's a double. You see what I'm, what I'm doing here? So these represent doubles, four, four, five, five, and six, six. So that's one option. The other option would be, well, what did it say, a sum of seven. Okay, so where do we get a sum of seven? Well, this one's easy. You just look for all the sevens in the table. And here are the sums of seven. So six and one, five and two, four and three, three and four, two and five, and one and six. All right. So are there any squares that I colored with my yellow highlighter twice? So are there any squares that are both doubles and a sum of seven? No. Okay. So they're all separate. Okay. So you should be noting that. Now, when we're talking about the probability, we're talking about what are the favorable outcomes, the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes, right? And so probability, as you know, of event A, uh, actually, let's, uh, let's start to actually um, use some notation here. So let's say probability of doubles. Now, this symbol for or, I don't know, do you guys know this, this little kind of, kind of a U shape? Yeah. Have I showed you that, right, from last mm -hmm. chapter, or maybe chapter three even? Mm -hmm. Yeah, union, right, exactly, very good, you remember that. So probability of doubles in union with, that's or, sum of seven. So you could just, uh, you know, uh, symbolize it, something like that. And P, of course, is probability. And so the probability would be the number of, you know, times we would get doubles or seven divided by the number of, you know, I don't know, total, total opportunities, right? So this is probability. So how do we find this? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six chances for doubles. So the number of doubles is six. The number of sums of seven is what? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's also six. Now there are none, there are no spaces that are both doubles and a seven. So they're mutually exclusive. So the number of doubles or seven would be six plus six, right? They're separate. And what are the total number of sort of outcomes we could have? 36, okay? So that's 12 out of 36, and that's exactly one third, or 33.3% chance. Does that, uh, does that look right to you? Does that look right? Okay. I don't actually have any answers in front of me, so I'm just doing this with you. All right, good. So what about, uh, is there another, there's other parts. Let's see, student book here, okay. We did the outcome table. We circled the occurrences of throwing the, we, we kind of highlighted them, good. And we shaded the occurrence of the seven, good. So we noticed that there are no squares that we, we, we colored kind of twice there. 
So the sum of the probabilities of the two events in part B and C, okay. So the two probabilities would be 6 out of 36 plus 6 out of 36, right? And that's where we got our 12 out of 36, okay? So we did this, so, so the probability 1 was 6 out of 36, and then plus 6 out of 36 gives us 12. So we did that. I don't, tell me if I'm going too fast here for you. But we're just kind of going through this little um, activity here. So use your outcome table to determine the probability that Yannick will roll doubles or roll a seven. How does this probability relate to the sum? So what we found is that his probability would be 12 out of 36, and that comes from the sum of the individual probabilities of those two things. Okay? So now let's illustrate with a Venn diagram. Okay? Venn diagram. So you guys can write this down, please. So this is the investigate. Let's do the Venn diagram here together. Actually, I'll try and keep that in the screen. You know what I'll do? I'm going to erase some of the stuff here. So let's do our Venn diagram. I'm going to erase this. We got that already. So Venn diagram. Okay. So if we have all of the roles here in sort of the universal set, okay, uh, rolling, a, rolling doubles, let's put a circle for rolling doubles, and that would be what we said, six, right? Um, rolling seven, okay, so rolling a, a sum of seven would be another circle, and that's also six. Now notice that we said that there's no occurrences where one roll gives us doubles and a sum of seven, right? And so that's why, that's why I wrote these two circles not overlapping. You could write them overlapping, you could, and if you weren't sure, you could certainly do that, okay? This is always a good thing to do, this is the seven one. But there's nothing in here. This would be zero, this middle part. You see that? So if this is zero here, if there's zero occurrences where both happen at the same time, that means those two sets are actually, what's the word for them? Starts with D. You remember from chapter three? Huh? They're di disjoint. They're disjoint sets. Very good. And if they're disjoint sets, that means that the events themselves are mutually exclusive. Okay? So, you guys are already ahead of the game, you understand that. Disjoint sets, those events are mutually exclusive from one another. There's no chance that one of those events could satisfy or could lie in both Venn diagram circles, okay? And so the question says, are the two events mutually exclusive? Yes. And how does your Venn diagram show this? Well, we just talked about that. So determine the probability of throwing doubles or a sum of seven, and we did that, of course, 12 out of 36 or 33 point three percent okay uh, do you guys have any questions about that okay so remember when we're talking about or we add up all of the probabilities of all of the individual or mutually exclusive events so the, the next thing I want to talk about here and there's a Venn diagram for two mutually exclusive events okay um, do you remember this principle of inclusion and exclusion we're gonna talk about that one here where, where should I? Okay, let's do it right here. And I think I have this already in my notes. Okay. Okay, well, here's just a summary of what we've done. You don't have to write this down. But, sorry, this is just a summary of what we've talked about. The Venn diagram, two disjoint sets. And the probability of A is just the number of A out of the total. The probability of B would be, right, the number of B out of the total. Right, and so you can just add up those probabilities, and uh, and it comes out to this. Let's just write this down. So, principle of inclusion exclusion says the probability of A um, or B happening, if they are mutually exclusive, would be simply the sum of the two individual probabilities. Okay, and in chapter three, we actually did. I think really we just did the number of A or B equals the number of A plus the number of B, right? So the principle of, of inclusion and exclusion would be what we'll talk about next here, and that would be where we have non-mutually exclusive events. So non-mutually exclusive events in a Venn diagram would be represented by two circles that overlap. And there would be something in here, something in here, and something in here. Remember those uh, questions? And we'll do more of those too. You probably all, already, you already have this case, okay? But if we're talking about event A and event B here, the principle of inclusion and exclusion says this. To find the probability of A or B, we would have to, sorry, we would have to take, that equals, the probability of A plus the probability of B 
But then something else. We have to account for this overlap. And so what do I write here next? How do, what's the principle of inclusion and exclusion when we have an overlap here? So I'm adding up all of this. And then I'm also, and then I'm adding up all of this. All minus right. You see how we're double counting? Remember the double counting? Yeah. So what we have to do is we have to subtract the probability. Again, these are all probabilities. The probability of having A and B. Do you remember that? Okay, you remember that? So that's, Im that's important. And if we're talking about probabilities, it's the exact same as if it's just the number of items. You just add up the probabilities and that sort of thing. Okay? Now, this always holds true. You need to memorize this for sure because you can apply this over here as well. If we subtract the probability of A and B, guess what that is? Zero. Yeah, it's zero. And so if you subtract zero, you're not changing it, right? So really, it applies in all situations. Uh, any questions at all at this point? Okay. So hopefully just coming through 5.1 to 5.3 here with the whole probability thing, this is making a lot of sense. Okay, um, here's one more way of looking at this. Now, I, I think we've got maybe it's some new notation here. I think we've done this before. Maybe you don't remember, but we have, uh, I think I've introduced this to you before. So another way to look at this, without adding up all of A and all of B and then subtracting one of those pieces in the middle, is another way to look at it is if you want to find the probability of A or B, that's all of this, right, and just counting everything once, the probability of A or B, then you can take this. You can take the probability of getting A but not B. So that's A not B. And that would be this one here. A not B would be just this stuff right here, right? Everything that's in here. And you could add to that the probability of B but not A. And that would be this right here. <coughs> B but not A. And then you can add to that the final piece of, let's use green here, of A and B. And of course, that is this middle piece right here. Okay? So if you add up these sections of that Venn diagram individually, that's another way of looking at it. Okay? And the reason, okay, so when, you, when do you use these two? Well, it depends what the question gives you. If the question says, you know, the total probability of events in A happening would be this, then that's all of A. Then you probably have to use this formula. If it says that, hey, you know what, the events, the events um, or the chance of only A happening would be this, and the chance of only B happening would be this, then you can have an idea that, hey, we're talking about different sections of the Venn diagram here. Okay? So this would be only A, this would be only B. Get that? So you have to think about how the question is worded as well in, in order to know what to do. All right, questions? This is, this is going pretty well here. Okay, now there are a number of examples I'll get you to look at in your textbook. Okay, I, I would, um, I'm not going to go through all of them because, uh, you know, some of you may, may really need to look at that again and some of you maybe don't. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of fast forward here to to the key ideas and let's just go over those as a bit of a summary for this lesson okay all right so the key ideas in the textbook here start on this page what is this page page 337 so the key ideas say this you can represent the favorable outcomes of two mutually exclusive events a and b as two disjoint sets so rolling uh, doubles on two die, two dice, and rolling a sum of seven, for example, mutually exclusive. There's not one roll that does both. And you can represent the probability that either A or B, remember the or, will happen by this, adding the individual probabilities. So just as an aside, what's the probability that A and B will happen in this case? Sorry? What's the probability that A and B will happen? I'm seeing some head shake. It's zero, right? Because there are no, uh, there's the probability that nothing will happen in between. Not, there's no overlap. So the probability of A and B is zero. And that's where we find down here, you see probability of A and B. It's this 
minus zero, really. So when they are not disjoint, okay, two different ways of looking at it here. Sorry, well, what's happening? Probability of A or B, add up the probability of A. Wow, we got some. Probability of A, that's this whole circle, plus the probability of B, that's this whole circle. Subtract A and B, that's this middle portion. Uh, an alternate way to think about that would be um, to add up only A, that's this part, and then only B, this part, and then A and B, a third part that you can just add them all up. Okay? As I mentioned, the number of events in A and B for mutually exclusive events would be zero. The probability would also be zero. Right here. Okay? Okay, you can use the principle of inclusion and exclusion, which is used to count the elements in the union of two sets to determine the probability. All right, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, you can look back to the examples, please, when you get stuck, uh, or if you get stuck here, but I will give you your, give you your assignment. And so here we are. There's all of Chapter 5 homework for this particular class. Anyway, so we've got 5.4 here, 1 to 3, 4, 9, um, 12, 12's it, not hard, 12's it, a little bit tricky, so 12, maybe do that one last, and 15, okay? So go ahead and write that down, and I'll copy that into the notes as well. It's actually right there, okay. Let me, let me check. Okay? I'm just going to finish what I'm doing here.